Pascal, I'm seriously worried. Why has our phone been switched off ever since that day I had that bad dream about that? Thought we have prayed for her. Nothing will happen to her. Relax, she's fine. No, Pascal, I'm not sure Angela is fine. I'm thinking she might be in danger. Maybe she went back to Tony's house. Those people never liked her. Who knows if they've arrested her? What are you going to do now? Should I send my lawyer to confront Tony and his family? Not now. Let's know her whereabouts first. I'll ask a friend of mine to help me check on her. Whom will you send to check on her? A church friend. Let me look for his contact on my phone. I pray I still have his contact on my phone. <laughs> Angela's phone is switched off for three days now. No, something is wrong somewhere. Angela is in danger. Babe, calm down. Stop being pessimistic. She will be fine. Nothing is going to happen to her. <laughs> Amen. May God protect her from that evil family or who knows if Linda has kidnapped her again. Linda, but you told her not to do online business anymore and she has changed the phone number which Linda had. How can Linda get her contact again? I can't tell. I'm just thinking of so many things right now. Let all this going through my mind not be true. The phone you saw isn't mine. It took my phone away from me because it told I was dead. So you hurt him out of anger because you have realized he has poisoned you? Exactly. I was so bitter because I was dying already. It was out of anger and bitterness that made me decide to retaliate with my final breath. Hmm. Do you think he would be alive by now? I don't think so. He slumped to the ground immediately. He was lifeless. Believe me, I didn't know he would die. I just wanted to retaliate. It's okay. I believe you, Angela. I went through the phone and I saw some secret chats he had with that very woman. You mentioned her name. Most of their calls were even recorded. I listened to everything and I did not hear anything wrong. They said you did. Honestly, I didn't do anything to them. Just because as soon and I were in love, she frustrated the relationships with both stone enemies, yet she doesn't want to see me alive. Hmm, there are some deeper secrets I also found out too. But I won't say that now. Don't worry, relax your mind. You're not gonna go to jail, even if they arrest you. Just get yourself a good lawyer. So many evidences are on this phone to vindicate you. You were just trying to be defensive. Why did you carry his phone along? I took it so that I could get evidences against them from the phone. Hmm, that was a very smart move from you. You did well. Thank you, Drumbo. I am very angry with Drumbo. He keeps misleading me. Ah, uh -uh. misleading as how? Are you a blind girl who needs to be guided? Daddy Jumbo, that is not what I meant. Jumbo keeps telling me the wrong answers to all my assignments. Come and check my books. They are full of 0 over 10. Red pain everywhere. Hey, yeah, uh, um, remind me of that your name again. My name is Bimbo. Oh, Bimbo. Hmm. See, as your name reflects in people's lives, I blame the person who gave you this name. <coughs> um, Bimbo. I want to ask you this question. This your head that I am seeing. Is it for fancy? No, it is not for fancy. I use my head to carry loads. Oh, okay. S smart answer. What about your brain? You know they work? Ha! Huh. I don't know. I haven't seen my brain before and I don't know if it is working. You are truly being bored. They call you. You said you found Angela's phone at his place. Yeah, I saw it in his wardrobe. Hmm. So where is the phone? I have handed it over to the police. They requested for it for proper investigation. No, Anthony, you should have told me before giving them the phone. I'm sorry, mom. The day I took the phone, I was invited to the police station that very day. So I went there with the phone and I was asked to drop the phone for investigation. Hmm, okay. Um, so what is the police saying about this? They are trying to find out where she lives and also get other necessary information that would enable them to track the lady on the run. Hmm. Do you think Nat would make it? You mean if he would come out of coma? Yeah, are you sure he isn't dead? I don't think so. If he is, the doctor would reveal that to us. What's the essence of keeping a dead man in the hospital? You don't know some of these doctors. Maybe Nat is dead, but those greedy doctors want to keep deceiving us so as to keep collecting money from us for oxygen support. Don't you see the huge amount of money we pay for oxygen on a daily basis? It's true, mom. Some doctors can do such. But let's just keep our fingers crossed and keep praying for him to survive this. Hmm, okay. I pray so. Just that we don't have to keep spending money on a dead man. Mom, Uncle Nat is not yet dead. Kane, I want to use this moment to deeply appreciate you and your granddad. God bless you for what you have done for me. I am greatly indebted to you for life. Angela, 
You're welcome. My granddad and I are so happy that you survived this. Young lady, you don't have to thank me. Well, I give all glory to God because he alone did it. Myself, I'm still surprised how you came out of this. Your case was a very severe one. But to my greatest surprise, you conquered death so quickly. You are a child of destiny indeed. Angela, I would suggest you go for an x-ray check so that we would know if there's any other treatment that you need. Ken, I don't think that is necessary for now. Let's just allow her to keep recovering gradually. Yeah. Grandpa, I want to be sure that she's fine. That's the main reason she needs to go for an x-ray. Listen, Angela, you have to go for an x-ray check. It's imperative you go for that checkup. My grandpa is just a herbalist. He has done his best within his capacity. You still need to go to the hospital as well so that he will be sure that you are perfectly fine. All right, I will. Good. By Monday next week, we both will be going for the checkup together. Trust me, you will be perfectly fine, okay? All right, Ken. Thank you so much, dear. Thank you, Bunch, to Grandpa. You're welcome, my daughter. What do you think about Angela? Has he seen her? He said that her house has been locked for over a week now. Where will she be? Our house has phone been switched off. I think you should contact Tony and his mother. We need to know what's going on here. I don't have Tony and his mother's number anymore. Let me see if I can get in touch with them through other means. Please do that as soon as possible. We need to find out what's going on over there. My mind is telling me that Angela had gone back to Tony's house and they've arrested and detained her at the police station. Hmm, it could be possible. But why would she do such a thing after all the warnings I give to her? That might not be the case. Let's not jump to conclusion already. Let's just keep trying our phone. Maybe we can be lucky and find someone who will help us get in touch with her. Hmm, I pray so. I'll go check my old diary to see if I can find Tony's number written anywhere in it. I need to call those people and know what's going on with my Angela. Hmm, let it not be what I'm thinking. Hello, good morning, madam. This is Melinda on the line. Okay, Melinda, how may I help you? I got your number from one of your customers who told me you sell jewelries, both locally made and foreign ones. Yeah, I do. Where are you calling me from? I'm calling you from the FCT. I want to buy some jewelries. Okay, I'll forward your phone number to one of my sales rep at one of the branches I have in this city. Just tell her what you want. She will attend to you. Sorry, ma, but I would like to meet you in person because I'll be buying in bulk and I want us to establish a good business partner. I don't like the idea of doing business with just an ordinary sales rep. Okay, um, Mrs. Melinda, I have a lot of committees this period. Therefore, I may not be available for any business meeting for now. Sorry about that. Maybe you can give me some time to sort out things, please. It's alright, ma. Just take your time and sort things out. I'm not in the haste to purchase the goods. Whenever you have a chance for us to meet in person, just give me a call. Alright, Melinda. I will call you soon. Thanks for your understanding. You're welcome, ma. I'll be expecting your call. Have a nice day. Have a great day, too. Look at his silly head. I just wish he dies. Very greedy man. Judas Iscariot. Hmm. This one won't come out of coma. I beg, you should just die. I don't know what he's still doing here at the hospital. This doctor should just trash him to the mortuary. I have to tell them to pull away all those life supports. If he wants to die, let him die. Who knows where his phone is? I need to go to that stupid house and look for that phone. Hmm. Because I don't trust this nut. He might have some hidden evidence in that phone. I need to go to his house and look for that phone. Doctor, hope her body organs are all okay. Hope the poison didn't affect any of her organs. Um, how did you say this happened, Miss Angela? Someone poisoned my food and after eating the food, I started having stomach cramps immediately. It was so bad that I couldn't even walk. Hmm, so how did you treat yourself? I mean, what did you do or take that made you become whole again? Actually, my grandfather, who is a herbalist, was the one who took care of her all through that period. Believe me, he is very good at what he is doing. He really helped in saving her life. He mixed some herbs and gave to her to drink. Immediately she finished drinking the medicine. She started to vomit and stool out those toxic substances immediately. Wow, that's unbelievable. Hmm, so miraculous. I am glad she is feeling fine now. Why would someone poison his or her fellow human being? That's humans for you. The heart of men are so wicked. May God protect us from such enemies. Amen. It is well. Um, the text results show that her both ovaries were badly damaged by the poisonous substance she consumed. As a matter of fact, she might not be able to conceive for now if she is still bearing children. It is a pity, Miss Angela. No, no. Tell me, this is a joke, right? No, you must be joking. My ovaries did what? It can't be true. Hmm. I'm not a girl. Tony, what about Nat's mobile phone? 
I already told you that we couldn't find it that very day. The policeman I took to that house also ransacked the whole apartment, but we couldn't find the phone. We only saw that of Angela. Hmm, how can Angela's phone be found in that house instead of his own phone? Could it be that Angela ran away with his phone? Maybe. Relax, mom. The police are investigating deeply into this matter. Very soon, Angela will be arrested. The police have succeeded in getting her home address. Very soon, they will storm that police and arrest her. She will never go scot free this time around. Hmm, how about in that case? Are we still gonna leave him there? Listen, the hospital bills has eaten deep into my pocket. If he is dead already, let's get his body and bury him. Why still keeping a dead man at the hospital? I will speak to the doctor tomorrow. I will discuss this with him. Yeah, mom, you are right. The doctor needs to tell us his chances of survival. But something tells me that Mr. Nat would come out of that coma soon. Hmm, Tony, I don't think so. That man is gone already. Let's remove him from that hospital and bury him. What did she say? She said she has so much engagement at hand that she would phone me when she is chance for us to meet. Okay, what did you tell her about yourself? I told her I'm a businesswoman. I want to buy jewelry in bulk from her. Ah, uh, Linda, where you see such kind of money? Do you have that kind of money? Relax, Charles. I know what I'm doing. I want her to see me as a VIP customer first. That is the only way I can afford to bond with such a wealthy woman. Hmm, so what if she tells you that the goods you intend to buy would worth over a million? No problem. I will pay. Like seriously? Yeah, I will buy them and resell them. How will you resell them? To who? Relax, Charlie. You two they ask too much questions. Just they watch. You go see how I go take around this parrow. Hmm, okay. Doctor, I don't have more money to waste on oxygen. I don't think this man is alive. I am tired of spending my money on a dead man. Madam, please calm down. This man here is not yet dead. He is in coma and not dead. This is barely three weeks he's been here. If he's no longer alive, we the doctor would have declared him dead and hand over the corpse to your family. He still has a chance to survive. I beg you! Like, like doctor, you are just being greedy. Someone is dead already but you choose to keep him here so that you can use his semi corpse to be extorted money from his family. 419 doctors of nowadays. Stop fooling yourself. Let the dead man go. Excuse me, madam. Do you just address me in such manner? Yes, I did. And so what? Madam, I am a professional doctor and you shouldn't be teaching me my job. I beg, keep quiet. What if the so-called professional doctor doesn't know his job or knows it but refused to do it to a cause of greediness? Listen, if you claim this man lying here is not semi-dead, I command you to give him a death injection. Let him die. I can no longer spend my money on him. Since you don't know your job, let me teach you. Why did you alter the boss call? Now how 419 did it start? That. It wasn't intentional. I was trying to think out of the bus. Remember you taught us about thinking out of the bus. Shut up. Your mate are thinking out of the bus to make money and inspire the world. Yourself is thinking out of the bus to become professional 419. Shut up your mouth. Dad, I was just trying to be creative. Really? On someone else's notebook, this is how those politicians who utter budgets began. Small, small, you could alter people's destiny. Who is teaching you all these tricky behaviors? Nobody. It's an inbuilt something. I hear you. Inbuilt battery. Shut up. Who inbuilt it? The things I included in you are good morals. I don't know where you are learning these new behaviors from. Don't worry, continue altering documents. Just pray that you don't land in jail one day. You better find a way to undo that fixed course you wrote on her book. Yeah, how do I do that? No, now, I can't do that. What is written is written. Angela, it's enough. For how long will you keep crying this way? Man has said, but God hasn't said. Please, dear, I want you to wipe off your tears and pull yourself together. <laughs> Ken, you won't understand. You won't understand what I have gone through because of those people. Now look at me. I have been disfigured as a woman. Angela, it's okay. Stop crying. I know how hurtful this feels. But trust God. He will surely fix up things for you. Man has given his report. But God hasn't yet. Remember that God has the final say. I wish I never went to that hospital. I wish I wasn't told this. <laughs> Hmm, put that blame on me. I was the one who forced you to go for the x-ray. I just wanted to be sure that you are perfectly fine. And also, to ensure that you won't experience any recurrent stomach cramps or any other sickness. I am sorry. I... I... It's okay, Ken. You are not to be blamed. You did what any caring person out there would do. It's fine. It's a stigma. 
a pain and a burden I have to bear for life because of Tony and his family. Hmm, I no go agree, oh. I will go back to them. Yes, this time around, I am ready to fight like a wounded lion. Oh, Mr. Tony, you are here. Good morning. Good morning, doctor. I saw your call a few minutes ago. Yeah, your uncle is out of coma. Wow, thank God. When did this happen, doctor? A few minutes ago. Wow, to God be the glory. Can I go in and see him now? Not yet, Tony. He has been rushed to the intensive unit and right now he is under serious medical watch. Just take your seat here at the reception. Soon, we will invite you to come see him. Alright, doctor. Thank you. You are welcome, Mr. Tony. We would keep trying our possible best. I'm very grateful, Doc. God bless you. Linda, what's of the home? I don't call you. No, she never call. I want to call her back by next week. Why is she hesitating to call? Are you sure she hasn't realized you are the lady she spoke with in the past? I mean, that's Angela kidnap incident. No, she don't know saying me. You know, it's another phone number to call her this time around. Besides, during the time we used to speak over the phone in the past, I told her that my name was Stephanie, and I was using Pidgin English to address her. But then, this time around, I told her my real name is Melinda, and I spoke to her like a responsible businesswoman. She don't feel the code of at all. <laughs> responsible businesswoman indeed. That part got me. What's funny? I beg, Chief Joe. Oh, they laugh, Mumu laugh here, I beg. Linda, you are so funny, but joke apart, you can never be a responsible businesswoman. You know, do your blood at all. I don't understand. So, what do you do my blood? See questions. You suppose know the kind of, you suppose know your kind of specina, queen of the jungle, queen of titans, madame bass bulls, no nonsense, and no dolly first lady. <laughs> Crazy guy. Now happy they help me on a wash you won't give me. Charlie, you know well. Mom, guess what? I am not in that mood now. Son, tell me what is it? The doctor phoned me this morning and when I got to the hospital, he told me that Mr. Nat is finally out of the coma. Are you kidding me? Natalia is out of coma? Yes, mom. I even saw him myself. He is alive. As in his eyes were open? Yes, mom. Widely opened. He is breathing now. Oh, I'm so happy that he made it. Why is this so exciting to you? Because it's a miracle. Hmm, who told you that is a miracle? Don't mind those doctors, they know what they are doing. They have brought him back to life. Hmm. I don't understand, mom. Why do you say such? Tony, I was at the hospital yesterday. I gave the doctor a serious warning concerning how they have been extorting money from us. I told the doctor to make him leave or else I would take him away from that hospital. You see, that's why they revived him today. They know what they are doing. Hmm, you are right. Anyway, I'm glad that Uncle Nat is back to life now. We need to be at the hospital anytime soon. Let's know how he's faring. Tony, you can go there alone if you want to. I am kinda busy now. We'll pay him a visit much later in the day. Angela, it is not advisable to go back to your house for now. What if that man is dead and the police are already after you? I don't care. He tried destroying me first. Yes, I have evidences against him. My damaged ovaries are also there to prove my statement. Listen, Ken, I can't keep being a coward. I don't have to keep cowering from people who are my real enemies. Calm down, Angela. You're right. You're not effective because the mother wasn't a deliberate act. You were trying to retaliate against someone who was about to destroy you. Exactly. And I made sure I destroy him before he destroys me. This time around, I am ready to face them. They should take me to any supreme court, no wahala. I am ready to defend myself in any court they take me to. Sure you will, cause you have enough evidence to prove your own side of the story. I just want you to fully recover before embarking on this journey. You know my grandpa told you to avoid anything stress for now. Just relax until you are fully physically fit for this. I will also stand by you on this. Trust me. I don't care if he dies. What if I had lost my life? Those idiots will be free men walking and enjoying their lives. Why I would keep getting rotten in shallow grave? God forbid. They will never succeed. Ken, I told you that I heard that evil woman telling her evil brother-in-law to quickly bury me in a shallow grave inside this compound. Hmm, now wow. Those people are extremely evil. So wicked. No, this time around, I am ready to combat them even if it involves using weapon. I have grown tougher skin. My womb is gone, nothing to lose again. Even if I die in the process of this fight, I will be glad that I died a hero. I will never be a fugitive for no reason. Calm down, Angela. We are no fucked Don't worry. Very soon, we will fix all this. No, I won't calm down, no. I will go back there and drag them to court. The voice notes and call records on Mr. Nat's phone are super evidences. The doctor's report of my damaged ovaries are also there as evidence. I might be poor, but I refuse to be a coward.